So, I finally get to meet the courier who's caused so much trouble for the new California Republic. You spread word of the massacre of Nipton, just like Wolf has asked you. Beams of light shot down from the sky over Helios 1, killing who knows how many profligate troops. In Boulder City, you let the renegade Khans go free, but left NCR troopers gurgling on the ground, drowning in their own blood. I get it. We share a common enemy. And now you come before the mighty Kaisar to what? Offer your services? And you fell for that? Really? Because I'm going to have you killed now. Relax. I'm fucking with you. You do know why I wanted to meet you, right? A man nearly kills you, so you track him across the breadth of the Mojave? You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat? You assassinate the head of the chairman in his own casino and get away with it? But the topper, the coup de grace, Mr. House dies while you're visiting him at the Lucky 38. When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I like the servile attitude. Keep it up. The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House erased from the picture. Not just the man you killed, but what he left behind. His legacy. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch, and inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip you were carrying. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open, or drilled open, or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. I don't know, and I don't like not knowing. I know Mr. House built it. I'm thinking it's probably some kind of weapon that he can't activate from a distance. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there. And then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum chip with you. My legionaries will meet you there, with your weapons and equipment. Goodbye. I felt the ground shake a while ago. I'll take that as a sign you've got the job done. I've read Mr. House's obituary. Had a high opinion of himself, didn't he? With Mr. House out of the way, I can focus on smoothing out a few... Lingering complications elsewhere in the Mojave. First up are the boomers of Nellis Air Force Base. A tribe so reclusive, it lobs artillery shells at anyone who comes near their settlement. I want you to offer them an alliance with my legion. My terms are simple. Target their guns against the NCR side of the dam when I assault it. And they can keep their freedom. If you find they aren't amenable to this offer, destroy them. Hmm. Very well. One of my frumentari has set up camp near Hoover Dam. My legionaries will meet you there. Be on your way, then, and turn Camp Forlorn Hope into a mass grave. Yeah, I want NCR ranger stations out of the picture. Here. These written orders make it plain. What did you want to know? The boomers settled at the old air base northeast of Vegas many years ago. No one knows exactly how long it's been. It may be that no one's traded with them or even spoken to them that entire time. If so, they're sitting on one hell of a stockpile of ammunition. My scouts have seen people moving around the base. The perimeter is guarded with spotters and towers directing the artillery fire. They must have extraordinary vision. 
Some of my scouts were targeted at extreme distances. So no, I can't tell you what to expect inside the base. No one's been inside it, except them. What else did you want to know? My Praetorians embody the martial ideals of my legion. Each one of them has done enough conquering and killing to deserve the rank of Centurion. Instead, I invited them to join my guard. So the invitee chooses whichever current guard he thinks is weakest and challenges him. The fight is to the death. It keeps them from getting complacent. Lucius has been the head of my guard for five years now. He was a subordinate guard for eight before that. No invitee has dared to challenge him yet. Maybe it's an issue of respect. He is getting on in years. What else did you want to know? Wulpes is the best of my frumentari. A remarkable individual from an unremarkable tribe south of the Utah. He was brought into the Legion as a boy. Survived training. Fought well enough as a legionary to be promoted to the rank of Decanus. Then in battle against an unimportant tribe, he broke ranks and led his contubernium through a hole in their defenses to capture its chieftain. Well, his Centurion wanted him crucified for disobedience, so I made him a frumentari. Whatever I require, infiltration, assassination, dramatic atrocities to break the spirit of the enemy, et cetera. They're mentally flexible. They operate behind enemy lines for extended periods, imitating the enemy's customs without becoming sullied. In all these things, Wolpus is a master. What else did you want to know? Linnaeus is the greatest of my battlefield commanders. Some might call him a great man, but I'm not sure he qualifies. Once, he was the greatest warrior of the Hydebarks, a tribe of the Arizona. Maniacal in battle. Sometimes he'd ambush Legion patrols by himself. When after several months we found and surrounded the Hydebarks camp, their chieftain raised a banner of surrender. The warrior who was not yet Linnaeus went insane with rage. He struck down his chieftain and attacked his own tribe. He killed 15 before they brought him down. He didn't die, obviously. I had him tended to. He was maimed, most of his face torn off. It was days before he regained consciousness. When he did, I went to his bedside and showed him the helmet I'd had forged to cover his face. I said he could have it if he'd fight for me. He accepted, on condition that he be allowed to kill the surviving males of his tribe. I said, make it the adult males, and you have a deal. The Neus is savage. Savagely loyal, too, but only to me. He has no love for my legion. But this has its uses. He has no attachment to his men, no compunction about battlefield losses. All he cares about is destroying the enemy. When another Legatus or a Centurion fails to achieve results, I send Linnaeus to make things right. His first step is to beat the failed commander to death in front of his assembled troops. Then he orders the ritual of Decimatio. It means decimation, but in ancient Rome, the word had a very specific meaning, a punishment for cowardice. The legionaries are lined up in ranks. Every 10th man steps forward and is beaten to death by his brothers. It instills a certain robust obedience. Yes, this time my legionaries will be more frightened of the commander behind them than the enemy before them. There will be no failure this time, no retreat, no years of gathering slaves and resources for another assault. With Linnaeus to drive the legion forward, the dam will be taken. It will be our bridgehead across the Colorado. It's not going to happen again, that's all I have to say about it. And I've heard it's a bad idea to tempt the wrath of Kaisar. Change the subject. What else did you want to know? Do you want my opinion as a former citizen or future conqueror?
Actually, my opinion is the same either way. As a young man, I was taught to venerate President Tandy of Shady Sands, the founding mother of the new California Republic. Did you know her presidency lasted 52 years? And that her father, Aradesh, was the Republic's first president? Does that sound like a democracy to you? Or a hereditary dictatorship? Because the council didn't dare oppose her. She was too popular. She had the people's love. So things ran smoothly, more or less. And as soon as she was gone, as soon as there really could be democracy, what happened then? Ever since losing its queen, the NCR has been weaker, more diffuse. Democracy has been its weakness, not its strength. Greed runs rampant. The government is corrupt, accepting bribes from Brahmin barons and landowners to the detriment of citizens. The NCR is a loose conglomerate of individuals looking out for themselves. It's lost virtue. No one cares about the collective, the greater good. It's not built to last. I'm just hastening the inevitable. Of course, the most powerful my legion has faced. Also the first to which I am ideologically opposed. Until now, every tribe I've conquered has been so backwards and stunted, enslavement has been a gift bestowed upon them. My conquest of the Mojave will be a glorious triumph marking the transition of the Legion from a basically nomadic tribe to a genuine empire. Just as my namesake campaigned in Gaul before he crossed the Rubicon, so have I campaigned and will cross the Colorado. What else did you want to know? I know he's dead. I know he's no longer a factor. That's all I need to know. Losers don't matter in the history books. He's a fucking footnote. What else did you want to know? I've analyzed the region's tribe to determine how they might be useful. I may tell you more at a later time, if it suits me. What else did you want to know? Ironically, I was born a profligate myself, a citizen of the NCR. My family lived not far from the Great Boneyard. After raiders killed my father, my mother sought the followers' protection. I was two years old. She found work at their library, cooking and cleaning. I learned how to read, and soon I was taking courses, free of charge. Oh yes, raised in that tradition. And the teaching stuck. I was taught it was my responsibility to bring the torch of knowledge to the waste. I may have taken the torch part more literally than they intended. When I was 20, the followers sent me east to Grand Canyon. It was my first expedition. Just me and a physician named Calhoun. As an anthropologist and linguist, my assignment was to learn the dialects of the Grand Canyon tribes. What a fucking waste of time. If you think it's worthwhile to make smart people learn how to talk like backward savages, you're a follower of the apocalypse, or an idiot. Anyway, we met up with a Mormon missionary who already knew a bunch of dialects, Joshua Graham. He was supposed to teach me, but before that went too far, the Blackfoot tribe captured us to hold us for ransom. They were a backward bunch, but the real problem was they didn't know how to fight. The Blackfoot were at war with seven other tribes, each just as pissant as they were. But outnumbered like that, they weren't going to last long. It's one thing to be taken hostage, another to be lashed to a sinking ship. So over Calhoun's objections, I decided to take certain steps. I taught them how to use the guns they already had, how to strip and clean them, how to breathe when pulling a trigger, how to reload ammunition. They looked at me like I was some kind of a sorcerer. So I taught them how to make explosives and started drilling them on small unit tactics. If there's anything I learned as a follower of the apocalypse, it's that there's a lot of good information in old books. Duide et impera, divide and conquer. I led the Blackfoot against the Ridgers, their weakest enemy. When they refused to surrender, I ordered every man, woman, and child killed. 
When next we surrounded the Kaibabs, and they likewise refused, I took one of their envoys to the Ridger's village and showed him the corpse piles. This was new for the tribes, you see. They played at war, raiding each other, a little rape and pillage here, a little ransoming there. I showed them total warfare. Like I said, there's a lot you can learn from old books. Kaibabs joined me, and the Fredonians after that. All the pissant tribes with names that should be forgotten. I knew from the start I'd need to eradicate this plague of tribal identities, replacing them with a monolithic culture, a uniform identity. So that's what I did once my confederation of tribes was large enough. I crowned myself Kaisar and created a single great tribe, my legion. I sent Calhoun, the follower captured with me back west, with a message that I should not be interfered with. Joshua Graham, the Mormon interpreter, stayed with me and served as my first legatus. That's right. Decades of warfare, absorbing lesser tribes, gathering power, forging the dross into a vast, razor-sharp scythe. My legion's expansion has never ceased. Much of the Utah and Colorado and all of Arizona and New Mexico are mine. We have cities of our own, but nothing compared to Vegas. Finally, my legion will have its Rome. What else did you want to know? I used Imperial Rome as the model for my legion precisely because it was so foreign, so alien. I'd seen what had become of the NCR's attempts to emulate the culture of pre-war America. The infighting, the corruption. Rome was a highly militarized autocracy that effectively integrated the foreign cultures it conquered. It dedicated its citizens to something higher than themselves, to the idea of Rome itself. In Rome, I found a template for a society equal to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world, a society that could and would survive, a society that could prevent mankind from fracturing and destroying itself in this new world by establishing a new Pax Romana. It means a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, homogenous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers. Long-term stability at all costs. The individual has no value beyond his utility to the state, whether as an instrument of war or production. No, I'll destroy it because it's inevitable that it be destroyed. It's Hegelian dialectics not personal animosity. How do I put this basically enough? It's a philosophical theory, the kind you might encounter if you took time to read some books. The fundamental premise is to envision history as a sequence of dialectical conflicts. Each dialectic begins with a proposition, a thesis, which inherently contains or creates its opposite, an antithesis. Thesis an antithesis. The conflict is inevitable, but the resolution of the conflict yields something new, a synthesis, eliminating the flaws in each, leaving behind common elements and ideas. The bombs wipe the slate clean. Human civilization descended to a level of ignorance that effectively set our cultural progress back to zero. The NCR has all the problems of the ancient Roman Republic. Extreme bureaucracy, corruption, extensive senatorial infighting. Just as with the ancient Republic, it is natural that a military force should conquer and transform the NCR into a military dictatorship. Thesis and antithesis. The Colorado River is my Rubicon. The NCR Council will be eradicated but the new synthesis will change the Legion as well, from a basically nomadic army to a standing military force that protects its citizens and the power of its dictator. What else did you want to know? It's called an auto dock. As the name suggests, it's an automated physician, more or less. He can treat broken bones, cuts, punctures, scrapes. Sometimes I bestow its use upon someone I favor, makes for a powerful gift in a culture that forbids painkillers and is largely ignorant of medical science. Good. 
Your first challenge will be to reach their settlement without getting blown up. After that, it should be easy. Have you brought news of the boomers? Good. Make sure they help the Legion when the time comes. As for your next assignment, I spent months feeding the Omertas bribes, nursing their betrayal. See, thing is, I wouldn't trust them to lick my boots clean. This one falls to you. Make sure they help the Legion when the time comes. The worst impulses of mankind concentrated in one tribe. They're individuals looking out for themselves. No one cares about the greater good, but the value of their attack, the chaos it will sow behind the profligate's lines. The present benefits outweighed future costs. I don't know, and I don't like not knowing. What else did you want to know? What else then? Good. Complete your mission and return to me. I understand that you freed Silas before he could talk. I approve. Silas dishonored himself when he let himself be captured, and he'll pay the price for that. But the NCR didn't learn anything valuable. Very well. They will have to be dealt with eventually, but for the moment, they live to serve. Now, moving on. I want you to focus on smoothing out a complication elsewhere in the Mojave. Chief Hanlon, a nemesis of my legion, he's in the way. It'll frighten them. If I can reach out and kill whomever I choose, then they know the only reason they're alive is I haven't tried yet. By the time they recover and try to strike back, I'll be invading them. What else did you want to know? What else did you want to know? What else then? Good. You know where to find him. How he dies, I leave up to you. My frumentarius, Cato Hostilius, will meet you there. Have you been successful in your efforts? He died the humiliating death he deserved. Right under their noses, too. You are good, aren't you? Now, moving on. I want you to forge an alliance between Kaisar's Legion and the White Glove Society. They used to be cannibals. I expect that information can be used to manipulate them. Go to... Oh, oh, God damn it! Never this bad before. Fuck this. I'm going to lie down. Come back later. Tomorrow. Hello. The last time we met, I believe we were talking about the White Glove Society. I appreciate your concern, but I'm in excellent health, and we have other matters to discuss. Have you been successful in your efforts to recruit the White Glove Society? A number of NCR ranger stations have been wiped off the face of the Mojave, thanks to you. The profligates still hate me more than they hate you, I think. But I've been at this longer than you have. Keep it up. Come back when you know more about the White Glove Society. Have you been successful in your efforts to recruit the White Glove Society? Good. It will be valuable to have allies on the Strip when Hoover Dam is taken. Now, as for your next assignment, I want you to destroy the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. It's not a full-strength chapter, mind you. The profligates... Oh. <clears throat> mm. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
The Brotherhood. Them. I don't... I don't know. There ha have been a couple. Don't. But just leave it alone. I'm, I'm fine. Now, what was I saying? Right. Look for the Brotherhood's bunker around, uh... Hidden Valley. My, my scouts saw some things. I'm going to bed. We'll talk later. Has the Brotherhood been destroyed? Even with the Brotherhood to deal with, you have questions? The worst impulses of mankind concentrated in one insane backward tribe. The Brotherhood seems to have formed not long after the Great Atomic War. It's hard to know. They care little for history. Some of the Brotherhood scribes we captured further east didn't even know the name of their founder, Roger Maxson. They like to pretty up their mission with trappings of chivalry. But the truth is, they're hoarders. They hoard technology. It's been 200 years, and they still have the mentality of scavengers. They say they're preserving these technologies, but for what? They have no vision. They offer no future. They're a dead end. What else did you want to know? What else then? Very well. This latest victory brings to a close my efforts to reshape the power balance of the Mojave. And not a minute too soon. I want you to join me in my tent. You and I are going to have a private conversation. All right, let's state the obvious. There's something wrong with me. The headache started a couple of months ago. They weren't too bad at first, but now they come frequently and they're debilitating. For the past two weeks, my left leg has been dragging. It's stiffer, hard to move. And you've seen me blank out. Lucia says I stare into space, blink a few times, then keep talking like nothing happened. So what's the diagnosis? I figured as much. Congratulations, you just became my personal physician. Do you have what you need to treat my condition? Then gather those items together and hurry back to perform the operation. I don't know how long I've got. It's never had a functional diagnostic scanning module. Without that, it's useless for surgery. It's been said that the autodocs were standard equipment in the underground vaults where mankind survived when the bombs fell centuries ago. You can search the vaults, but every autodoc my legion has run across has been stripped for parts long before we found it. Some of my scouts did report an abandoned vault near Nellis Air Force Base. Overrun by ghouls, they said. Maybe the infestation has been there long enough to keep scavengers out. Why don't you go and see? Do that, and try not to take too long. Thank you for saving my life. The autodoc module you recovered did the trick. I trust this payment is adequate compensation for your troubles. Now, lest we grow sentimental here, the time for battle will soon be upon us. Legatus Linnaeus draws nigh. When he arrives, my legion will assault Hoover Dam. In the meantime, the profligates have prepared a welcome gift for us.
The president of the NCR intends to visit Hoover Dam. That's what I like to hear. One of my frumentaria set up camp near Hoover Dam. His name is Cato Hostilius. Go to him. He'll have further instructions. You know everything you need to know. Be on your way. Even with a president to kill, you have questions? A man of potential, held back by the craven political context he inhabits. You realize he was a general. The hero of the Mojave, they called him. A title he earned by extirpating lesser tribes that dared attack NCR citizens. His responses were swift and draconian. President Tandy, the founding mother, coddled hostile tribes. But her successors were less naive, so they gave Kimball free reign. And after a respectable military career, what does he do? Become a politician. But he did so by election. What better way to stunt the growth of leaders, not to mention whole cultures? A leader shouldn't have to kowtow to those who serve him. With so much energy wasted on those below, how is he ever to move forward? Had he taken the government by force, used his army to stage a coup, things would be very different. I'll just have to do it for him. It'll frighten them. If I can reach out and kill whomever I choose, then they know the only reason they're alive is I haven't tried yet. You have to understand that Kimball is a symbol. Without him, there would be no NCR occupation of the Mojave. He mustered the troops, as many as his Senate would allow, and sent them in. All the right reasons, done all the wrong ways. Any invasion by a democracy is a half measure. When Kimball dies, the NCR will recoil from the Mojave and from his legacy. By the time they recover and try to strike back, I'll be invading them. What else then? Complete your mission and return to me. You dispatched President Kimball with real skill. Right under their noses, too. What a humiliation. My forces are in a position to assault the dam. Legatus Linnaeus has assumed command. Are you ready to go to him? to tell him to begin the assault. Good. In hoc signo torus vinces. Report to Legatus Lanius immediately. He'll brief you on the plan of battle. Come back victorious, or don't come back.